Hi, I'm Demolition D Plus, and this is my review for Kyokai no Kanata. So it turns out people really liked Chuni. You know what I liked about Chuni? Hmm, this girl right here. And I guess a little of everything else. But it also made me realize something. What if Kyoto Animation got together and we took all of these delicious imaginary fight scenes with no impact on the plot and turned them into real fight scenes and multiplied them? and added some cool mythology to it, but we still kept all that great QAnny charm in the process. Yeah, yeah, this is looking pretty good so far. Okay, yeah, now let's ditch the classroom setting. No? Okay, well, I guess I'll settle for this. Homeboy here fights with a scarf. Some say he's Mr. Rogers' greatest disciple. Variety goes a long way in anime, and I've probably said that many times before in other videos, and I'll probably say it again because it's true. And Kyokai no Kanata manages to juggle just the right amount of variety to keep us entertained and longing for more by the end of each episode. Except episode 6. That is the filler episode. You may skip this one if you feel so inclined. Just go ahead and skip it. Just skip... Oh my. Kyokai no Kanata roughly translates into Beyond the Boundary. Or, The One Who Lies Beyond the Horizon. Depending on which subgroup you've chosen to go with, which is actually what the show's about. Take note, Moe High School setting anime world. Sometimes you can have a title that actually has to do with the plot instead of fucking cream puff angel bee cutie about marketplace or whatever. Akihito, or Aki, is a boy confronted with Mirai Kuriyama, a girl who's obsessed with killing him for the first couple of episodes. In school, of course, where else would they be? Medieval Japan? Rome? Inside of a volcano? Nope, just high school. And in this high school, we're introduced to these two alongside a pretty colorful cast of backup characters that all seem to fill a respective role in some way or another, and as such, never feel like they're just there to be there. And check this out, Kyokai does a really good job at immersing its audience. There's so many little things happening in the background and fine details not being explained in full, such as the magic behind appraising a demon stone, or barriers blocking a normal person view of crazy spirit hunter battles that the viewer finds themselves involuntarily intrigued as they watch and stay focused on an equally as interesting main plot. Congratulations, this is the basis of keeping someone interested in a story and it's something that a lot of shows fail at. And the main story is not all that concise at times either. You think you know where it's going at one point and then it'll throw a plot twist or two without being too difficult to follow and at the same time manages to continue seducing the viewer. N not that kind of seduction is silly. <laughs> to put it bluntly, Kyokai is just plain good at storytelling in its simplest form. Where other shows might imply that over time two sub-characters got to know and understand one another so much that by the end of the final episode they're all buddy-buddy, Kyokai no Kanata actually dedicates an entire episode or two to such a development, such as episode 5 to strengthen the relationship between Kuriyama and the best girl Mitsuki, rather than having their friendship become a mutual implication as the story carries on with a singular focal point. And that's not to say that multiple focal points are always the best strategy when telling a story, as it can get difficult difficult to, well, stay focused and keep your plot from falling apart, which has to do with talent and synergy behind the team creating the work in question, and Kyokai no Kanata's team certainly has plenty of both talent and, as I'd imagine after the many, many high-quality shows that they've worked on over the years, team synergy. Character interaction is the flavor of the day in a lot of my reviews, and that's because it's damn important. I don't care how beautifully choreographed your fight scenes are or how exquisite your soundtrack is, if you've got characters, even good characters, with wonky implementation and not very believable resonance, during things as simple as general conversation in the club room, then I'm going to deduct points. And luckily, this is an area where I really don't have to do that. You're not going to get anything groundbreaking here for the most part, but at the least, these characters, no matter how many traits they borrow from tired archetypal molds, feel real and responsive when interacting and making decisions together. It's reassuring to the viewer, like the show is gingerly placing its hand upon their shoulder as if to say, Don't worry, my friend. We see you're having a good time, and we're going to make sure that you stay immersed as possible. And I, for one, appreciate that. The most prominent example here of metaphorical personality on personality lovemaking is between our two mains, Mirai Kuriyama and Akito Kanbara. And what we receive from these two throughout the story is, again, by no means the greatest expression of character development, but it's still really good. The two of them have this sort of freak of nature thing going for them. They're outcasts because of this, and while one handles it fairly well after a tragic experience detailed later on in the story, the other does not, and these two complement each other in that sense as they grow closer and become more aware of their fates and similarities as monsters amongst monsters. As much as I wish Kyo Annie would have left out all of the Moeb 
blobness instead of just trimming the fat with this one, I would be lying if I said I didn't enjoy every moment of the series. I think that one thing that impressed me the most was the subtle facial animations during certain events. There's more ways to flaunt your large budget than with massive explosions and elaborate fight sequences, which the show definitely has. But having noticeable temperament changes mid-conversation and being able to tell when a character is stressed or distraught without it being directly narrated to the viewer is impressive not only on a technical level, but a creative and directorial one as well. As for the plot itself, there is never really a concrete point A and point B throughout, which is something that I'm personally a fan of in story, but isn't the easiest formula to pull off, and Kyokai no Kanata handles it just fine. At first, we're led to believe that this is a story of revenge between Kuriyama and the infamous Hollow Shadow, but by show's end, it turns into something much larger than that, and there's even an emphasis on romance that I didn't really expect, and it served as a nice cherry on top of an overall highly enjoyable experience. With anime in this same type of genre, even good anime, the execution is usually so tired that it's almost like you're going for a cross-country car ride during the whole experience, waiting for the next landmark to impress and wow you at the expense of being pretty bored in between. And with Kyokai no Kanata, the entire car ride is fun, comfortable, and time flies in between each and every memorable moment. Again, it's very simple, but good storytelling. As for presentation, Kyokai is an absolutely gorgeous show with some really creative monster designs and enigmatic lore that stuck out as most interesting to me, alongside an almost haunting and appropriate original score that lends to the show's overall Halloween-esque feel. Both the opening and ending songs are a really good listen as well and performed by talented crews. The pacing is great for the most part, and writing is extremely clever and well-implemented, with fun jokes and quips between the characters that will just make you fall in love with them. And the show wraps up with a pretty solid conclusion that I won't say anything more about simply because I wouldn't want to spoil you. Kyoto Animation has made some really good stuff over the years, and because of this, some people shit on them. Welcome to the anime community. We are the very hippest of hipsters, and we will hate anything if it meets a certain prerequisite of praise on the popularity meter. And even when set alongside this good stuff I've mentioned, Kyokai no Kanata has cemented itself at the very top of some of my favorite works from the company. There, I said it. Uh, Demo, where's Juni? Hey yo, Juni was fun. Nigga, that's all it was. So based on what I've said, you should be able to determine for yourself whether or not this is going to be a show for you, but if you feel empty and lost without my audible recommendation on Kyokai no Kanata, I'd say, yeah, totally. Go ahead and watch it, despite the fact that it still retains some of that substandard anime feel that we're forced to dredge through season in, season out, from the high school setting to the admittedly archetypal character design choices that they somehow managed to make work brilliantly. In light of both KyoAni's past efforts and the anime world as a whole, Kyokai no Kanata comes off as a breath of fresh air and is definitely worth anyone's time so long as they're not squeamish when it comes to massive pools of blood or excessive moe factor. This was technically my first full-on review of an anime series, unless you want to count the Neon Genesis vs. Rebuild of Evangelion dissection as a review series. So, not really sure where I was going with that. But if you liked what you heard from me here today and would like to suggest other series for future review, I'd ask you to come on over to the Facebook page and do it there. It was my birthday a little while ago and we partied hard. It was awesome. Sweater Apocalypse 2013. If you were there, you know what's up. <laughs> If you enjoyed this, you might like my Should You Watch miniseries where I review anime in an allegedly more humorous and less in-depth fashion for the sole purpose of influencing the viewer's decision to watch or dismiss an anime series entirely. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. Despite what my This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things videos might lead you to believe, I really do appreciate ya. You make my kokoro go doki doki, don't you know? Hope you enjoy Kyokai no Kanata. Bye-bye now.